Welcome to Matters of Decorum. I'm Scott Corum. This is what matters to me. My Wednesday gaming group, the Warriors of Wednesday, who are more like a week-long gaming group now because we get together three, four, five nights a week sometimes uh, online, uh, have been searching for an online gaming experience for years that is... Uh, satisfying over a long period of time and we've played a number uh, we, we we really dig survival games uh we've done an awful lot of uh arc uh arc survival evolved and uh did some some atlas which is a pirate game based off of arc uh seven days to die that was a very good one uh, we get a lot of our recommendations from Neebs Gaming, a uh, YouTube channel that is just uh, a bunch of guys who are professional entertainers who do gaming videos, and they're just astonishing. Check it out if you get the chance. Um, and a game that we have just discovered, we, we tried playing a game called Space Engineers a while ago, and it's a very dedicated building game. We like our, our, our building games. Uh, we've got some people with a lot of building and artistic experience in the group. And so games that let us express that are, are a bonus. Space Engineers didn't quite have the kind of gameplay loops we were looking for. The gameplay loop was basically don't die, build stuff. Uh, there, there wasn't much in the way of opposition aside from the environment. Uh, it wasn't satisfying that. And the building system was kind of esoteric. And if you weren't an actual engineer, it was a little difficult to grip your wrap your head around. But my son, who is constantly looking for new games and finding new experiences, uh, his Steam library is something like five times the size of mine, and most of which are games he's never played, but he's working his way through them, found us a game that has pretty much everything we've been looking for. I'm getting to role-playing content. I just want to build up to it. The game is called uh, Empyrean Galactic Survival. It's still in pre-release. Uh, but we, uh, well, it's been released, but it's not in its finished form early release, I guess, early access. And it is, for the moment, absolutely everything we've been looking for. It has a slightly overcomplicated but very flexible build system, a good science fiction environment, good weapons, there's plenty of opposition out there, and environmental difficulties, and you're basically uh, starting off on a planet where you have crash-landed and with, with practically nothing, and building yourself up to where you're actually creating spaceships and uh, traveling to, to other systems and crafting your stuff amongst other factions, uh, some of which you're hostile with, to, uh, to, to establish an empire. It's pretty good. It has a good feel to it. Uh, uh, First-person survival with some uh, uh, third-person camera elements and plenty of vehicle action. But the gameplay loop uh, is not entirely Empyrean's fault. Uh, I'm sure a lot of thought went into making things tend towards the way we were playing it. But we have no one but us to blame when things go terribly, terribly wrong. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, the, the, the gameplay loop in Empyrean, as the Warriors of Wednesday have discovered it, is survive, build up, uh, get a little bit of competence under your belt, feel like you've got a handle on a situation, see opposition, go deal with it, go look at the opposition to see what it's like, get your shit wrecked right for you, uh, swear vengeance, go back, build up, go deal with the opposition. Uh, lather, rinse, repeat, because that Oh, we've dealt with this. We've we've taken their base apart. It's astonishing. Let's go after the next base. Oh, we got our shit wrecked right for us. Let's go build up. It it it, it never stops. And it's we, we haven't left our first planet. Well, we've left the planet. We haven't left the system. 
Uh, we haven't gotten to other planets in the system. We've gotten to as far as the local moon and space stations. Uh, you don't have a lot of penalties for dying, which is actually really good. The penalty you have for dying is you drop your stuff in a pack that will despawn if you don't get to it after a little while. So if you've got a lot of nice stuff, and we tend to carry a lot of nice stuff with us, we are building up after all, uh, that's left there in the field where you died, probably where there's a lot of opposition that has killed you, and you've got to go back to where that opposition is and get it. You can respawn a random position not too far away, which can be on the other side of a hill so you are safe for a moment, or it can be right in the middle of an enemy patrol, all of whom have rail guns and really want to wreck your shit right for you. So, uh, it is, you know, we, we've had evenings where we have just started counting how many times we've died because that's the that's the drinking game at this point in time and those are astonishing moments one i i was patrolling an area i'm mostly ground based everyone else has gotten into into the air but i like the hovercraft uh, system so i'm building increasingly tanky uh, hovercraft and my son has built a really maneuverable, very fast fighter. He, uh, I, I spotted base, an enemy base that looks like it's a little rough. I take a couple of hits every time I get this a little bit too close to it, manage to dance back out because I'm heavy and tanky. My son goes in to get a good look because he's got a well-armed, very fast fighter, and I watch him get shot down. It is spectacular. He gets shot down. His backpack is gone because he cannot get back there uh, even if he spawns nearby and, and he does but he's just got to get out he's his his fighter that he put the effort into is gone you have to collect things from rocks and trees to build space fighters it is not an easy process and so that fighter is gone it's not only gone but what is left of it has been claimed by the enemies because they shot out the part of it that allowed my son to claim it as his own uh, and all of his stuff is there in a place he can't get to next to a base that can one-shot his fighter and, like, three or four-shot my hovercraft. We go back, we build up. Some of the other guys go have a look at it, see what it's like, get their shit wrecked right for them, and uh, we build up, we go... The feeling of power when you have the stuff to take that particular base that could one-shot you a little while ago, but now you're ruining it. And then you get a little bit deeper into the base, and it's full of people who have stuff better than yours, and you die 15 or 20 times just trying to get your backpack back from where there's a bunch of guys trying to kill you every time you show up. Uh, the satisfaction of reducing a base like that. To, I, I learned that phrase from Doc Smith uh, from the Lensman series. I love that phrase. You reduce the enemy base. Uh, take it down to nothing. And you can. If you blow up the piece of the base that allows them to claim it, you take out the core, you can then salvage their base. And that's a lot of really great materials, but you can build better stuff and go find their next big base which wrecks your shit right for you. This happened like three or four times on the planet side. We've almost wiped out the faction that has made us so miserable. It's the only faction that we're hostile with. We've picked our, our, our fights pretty well. Well, they started picking it with us. We, we built a base. They started sending drones over to, to, to bombard the base. So it was going to come down to this. There can be only one. And we're removing it one base at a time. Going through this loop, let's go have a look at the base. Oh, that base is too rough. Let's build up, go back, take out the base. Awesome. Three or four times we have done this. We've reduced a number of their bases. I think they've got two left on the planet. And it's two because they've rebuilt one of them that we've already taken down. So you do have to make sure that uh, the... Uh, I'm hoping if we drive the entire faction off the, off the entire planet, 
that uh, they will stop responding, but that is stuff for us to do on this planet on a fairly constant basis. And the other factions, who didn't like these people either, uh, are treating us better because we have are doing the public service of removing the people from play who are not playing well with others. One of our group, the person responsible for the phrase, damn it, Barrington, uh, did a little exploration on the moon. The enemy faction has a base on the moon, and they wrecked his shit right for him. We barely managed to stage a rescue mission, because uh, not everyone has a craft that can make it to the moon easily. We picked him up, we brought him back, we got a little big for our britches. I'm talking about something that happened last night. This is a uh, fairly fresh insight. I don't have a spaceship. I've been working on the hovercraft. I've, I'm working on a capital ship, the largest class. It's going to take a long time to actually finish up a mobile base for us to have in space that will take us to other systems. Uh, but we've got a number of small craft and uh, so, folks, well, let's let's head up to the moon and deal with that base. I'm not uh, well, I could stay here and work in the capital ship, and they they said words I will never let them forget for the rest of my life. It's going to be fun. There's a lot of experience up there. Well, you always need levels. You always need levels because levels means more skills for building better stuff. Okay, yeah, all right. Uh, let me hop in one of the pa passenger seats on your ship. Uh, from the passenger seat, I'll get in the control panel. I'll man one of your turrets. So I'll be your tail gunner. You've got a tail gun. I'll be your tail gunner. The gun's mounted upside down, so I get a little motion sickness while I'm using it, but that's okay. I'll be the tail gunner and keep people off your butt. Awesome. We go up to the moon. Uh, three ships up to the moon. Uh, and these are ships we've been working on for man, over a month, uh, and just refining it and putting it together and building better components and developing levels just so that we can get that better component to put in the ship and refining the shape and the function and having taken old ships apart and lost a couple of ships and putting everything together, including everything you've learned and they're starting to look better and we learned how to paint them. So we're all up there in our colorful ships and we have a little hard time finding one another, and you can see where this is going, uh, if you've been listening. And we find this, the lowest level base we have seen in a while. <sighs> you know, there's a level 5 base out of the planet we haven't touched yet, but we've reduced a level 4 base. There's a level 1 drone base on the moon. Like, okay, let's... What just happened to because I, I was in the tail gun speed. I didn't get to see what happened, but uh, we got a little separated from each other. As we are closing in, suddenly, boom, there's the base. It's not that big. Kind of snuck up on us. And there's a little higgledy-piggledy uh, going on when you enter a, a, uh, a body. There's, there's the, the map you have when you're on in space and the map you have when you're on a planetary body or a satellite, as it so happens. and. The ship that I'm on, uh, Wayne's flying that ship, and his cockpit gets one shot. He's down. The ship is dead in the water. Uh, I'm pointing straight down, not quite, so I can see the base that just got us. But I can't depress the gun quite far enough to get any shots off on it before the ship is done. I bail out right next to the base. I'm dead. Ship is gone. Uh, Al comes in uh, to to try and support one shot. He's gone. Andrew comes in with his ship, which is a it has been built almost entirely as a response. So having gotten one shot earlier, he takes a hit and, and goes down. They uh, they they hit right where most of his uh, subsystems are located, and. Uh, he's still got some stuff, but his ship just augers into a crater. The next five minutes are us realizing we're on the moon. There is no air out there. There is what we have in our pockets. All of our stuff is next to that base, which will kill us the moment 
we get near it. Now, I say the next five minutes, the next five minutes is us dying for half an hour, uh, over and over, because we get spawned right next to the base, we start getting hit. It's horrific. It's terrible. Uh, and we're, we're sitting here complaining to one another online, and it is just angrier and more desperate. We're on the moon. The best we can do for the moment is create something called a survival tool. It's a, you can replicate it out of your bat, out, out of your suit, and it lets you harvest resources and in a very clumsy, slow fashion, allows you to dig. We get, we spawn far enough away that we can survive. We get to a safe spot and we slowly tunnel under the surface of the moon to get our backpacks. You know, tunnel the stuff out from under the backpack falls. We pick it up. We pull back. We manage to use, do this maneuver, salvage one of the ships, uh, salvage Wayne's ship because it was right next to the base and they're hovering over it, just blowing it away with the drones, trying to, re trying to completely destroy it. We get a bunch of stuff back from that. We pull back. Uh, Andrew is trying to get to his what is left of his ship because he keeps spawning next to the base. Uh, Al is also his his ship is just gone. Uh, it, it just it did not last very long at all. It was meant to be fast and quick, and uh, it, it it went like Andrew's did uh, the first one. I've got some stuff in my pocket. We can we start the cycle of okay. I'm going to set down a base and maybe, maybe we can figure out how to survive here long enough to cobble together something that will get us back to the planet. It is risky and it is desperate. And with what we have salvaged from Wayne's ship and what we've had in our backpacks, we might just have it. Uh, but it's rough. We build a survival constructor, something that lets us put resources in and craft things like starting our base and starting a ship. Uh, it's not easy, but we, we, we have that. Andrew is strangely silent because he's focused and I, he is very focused at this point in time. It is desperate because he's trying to get back to what's left to his ship, which couldn't hurt. Al eventually makes it to where we're at the base. We're good. We're putting stuff together. Wayne goes off to salvage stuff. Al gets in the in the constructor. He's accessing the constructor's menu. When you are accessing a, some, something's menu, like the constructor or a, a container, no one else can access that because the, the game gives that person full access. Al says, hang on, I'll be right back. I'm like, Al, before you get out, could you stop X? Could you, Al? Al? <laughs> and so we have put everything that we've salvaged all of our materials everything we're trying to keep alive with in the constructor al leaves the game for 10 minutes for reasons unknown with his character logged into the constructor wayne and i are dead in the water uh that's where all of our supplies are that's where all of our materials for building anything everything is going to keep us alive and so we start dying from oxygen deprivation and starvation uh, on a repeated basis and having to try and make it back to the base because we often spawn right next to the missile base. Uh, Wayne tries digging out the ground from under Al's character to get him further away from the constructor so that he can, uh, uh, so that we can get back into it and it doesn't work. And so Al, Wayne just fills the hole in over him, uh, not for any practical purpose, just so we can feel better. Andrew announces he's at his ship and he might be able to get it to fly. You could not write a movie like this. If you did, I wouldn't believe a moment of it. I've got access to my, I got my backpack back. So I've got some equipment now and including my very good drill which allows me to tunnel through through things and get resources much faster than with the basic survival tool. Andrew's ship, I can see on my scanner, is 500 meters away. I start digging a tunnel because that's all we got. That's all we've got is hoping that Andrew's got enough stuff on his ship to get it back. I get 
to Andrew's ship. It is half gone. Most of his components are missing. Most of his components. There's just enough there. And he did a great job of shielding his engines. So they were beefy and uh, well protected. Got two passenger seats. He puts an extra one on the outside of the ship. Al shows up, wondering why we buried him, uh, and was as more than apologetic. That was the, the faux pas happened, but it was a great comedy beat in the middle of all of this, uh, as well as you. And again, if you go to see a movie about this, there's that, there's the one guy, the who who yo, know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you see a, a movie with situations like this, there's always the one guy because you have to have the complication in the middle of the, the conflict. Uh, or, you know, there's that that one guy. Is, the other six people are all ready to get off the island, but there's that one guy who can't quite seem to get it together. Gilligan! It, it was perfect. It, it was, from a gameplay perspective, it was horrific. From a story perspective, it was perfect we get bet we 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 part the stuff from from where we had started our base down the tunnel back and forth dying a couple of times in the process uh and and having to get back to our stuff get everything loaded on what is left of andrew's ship up on board when we lift out of the crater we are going to be in direct line of the missile base we have problems Andrew assures us that we're not going to be there for long enough. He tilts it up and he punch. He, we, 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 I don't even think we had the vertical lift rockets, so we had to tilt it up and punch it straight up. It took us eight seconds to get to, uh, to get off the moon. We saw missiles coming up after us, which was because. Both Wayne and I were in seats that were facing backwards, so we had a perfect view of the rockets from the drone base coming straight at us. And then Andrew managed to outpace them, and then we're in space proper. Augur through the through space, punched the atmosphere. I pull up my map, navigate his home. Because Andrew doesn't have his scanners anymore. Uh, he's flying. I can't say he's flying blind because he is literally looking out the holes in the front of his ship. And we land at our planet side base safe. I want to run that game. I want to run a game where things are as bad as they can possibly be, but you've got just that hint of a chance. There have been movies about people who get stranded on a desert island out in the Pacific, and there's maybe a couple of wrecked World War I, World War II aircraft there that they can maybe, if they've got just enough moxie, cobble together one flying craft that can get them off the island and back home. Those are astonishing movies. There, I, I wish I could remember the title of one of them. I'm going to look up, but but we played that. We played that on the fucking moon. The game's mechanics lent themselves to everything working out the way they did, and the game's gameplay loop kept us constantly on our toes, hoping we didn't die too many times, because. We were in a position where we might have to spawn back on the planet with none of our stuff, leaving everything on the moon. If we could not find a way to get off the planet. And we found a way. Uh, one lucky space fighter with just enough resources and barely enough components to lift off, but it still had his tanky engines, so we got back. I'd read the comic book. I'd watch the movie. Uh, I want to run the role-playing game. The thing that is functioning so well for us in this, because we've had a number of situations where things have gotten bad. 
We're going to lose all of our stuff. We're going to get in a situation where we can't get back to our things. Uh, I built a super tanky uh, hovercraft. I was mid refit. I had I had stripped up down all the weapons and taken off a bunch of systems and put one thing on it that's good for salvaging and mass. And uh, Wayne took it to salvage some of the reduced bases and was was salvaging and stuff and. A base spawned back on top of him while he was down in the space under it. With my hovercraft. Well, where are the guns? There are no guns. It's it's in refit. There are giant holes in the top where guns go. It, it, you, you've got the you've got the, the, the salvaging turret. That's it. And it was all hands on deck to go re-reduce the base and get him out with the hovercraft. Because that thing, we call it the Beast, and it is uh, a work in progress, but it is the tankiest thing that we've got and makes doing some of these ground operations possible. If you don't want to lose your stuff, you've got to get back in there. You've got to rebuild. You've got to take some chances. you got to get the best stuff you got and go and see what you can do about salvaging the situation before you get your shit wrecked right for you again. And those times where there is desperation in the ch in the, the voice chat and people are calling out situations, I'm over here, uh, and this has happened, and oh my god, it's bad. And we we get together and we go and we fix it. We we get our brother out of trouble, get our stuff back, and make the people who put us in trouble pay dearly for the crime of putting us in trouble. So satisfying. There's a crunch to that. There's... We're trading with the space station and getting rare materials, and one of the reasons we're planning the capital ship is so that we can go to other systems where we can mine the materials for ourselves, but right now, the rare stuff's only available from a couple of vendors, and we're trying to figure out the markets that's fun. Those are interesting mechanics. That's that's a good thing to work out. Um, and learning the construction and learning all the crafting skills, that's fun. That's good. But man, when things go bad, it's the best. It's the best. A lot of this is the group. A lot of this is the group that I play with. Uh, because we do have this built up over a couple of years of doing this gaming more or less constantly that we are uh, dedicated. We, 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 we know one another's flaws and foibles. We know one another's strengths and weaknesses. And uh, we, we dig in and we build to our strengths and try to cover one another's weaknesses where we can. and. It's very functional. When situations go bad, we start pulling together. Someone got to stay back at base and make sure because we uh, the base might get attacked. So someone's got to make sure the base doesn't get too badly hit. Uh, someone's got to make sure that things keep getting produced and manufactured back at base. Some, someone's got to go out and get transport handled. And uh, someone's got to go lay down the pain. Wayne's got a chain gun that he stole from a, a closet in a brewery. How do you lose that item? That's legendary. Even if the quality is not the best chain gun you can get, it's a chain gun he stole from a brewery. How bad can you want it? That's, that's the best thing you can have because there's flavor, there's story, there's legend to it. And you have these things you crafted, made, and you got to go use them to get someone else's stuff back constantly. We come out of those situations that have been terrible and we have worked our way out exhausted, tired. We had to log out. It, it was not, I, I could only, Andrew stayed on the longest because uh, he had to figure out how to use the bases, our bases, new repair system to fix his fighter, which deserved to be fixed and i stayed online with him until it was back in one piece and then we logged out i was exhausted i slept like a baby 
Because you come out of those situations worn out, exhausted, as though you have been running around dying in the shadow of a drone base on the moon trying to get back, hoping that the resources you've got are enough for the job. That's a good gameplay loop. That's one you can replicate in an RPG and should. Conflict drives RPGs. Conflict drives stories. Conflict complication. Hopefully resolution. Uh, there is something that you need to solve. And the worse that situation gets, the more desperate things are, the more resources characters have to burn to get out of it, the more personal resources characters have to burn, the more resources the players have to burn in terms of what they're trying to think up, strategize, looking at their characters, working out what they can do with what's on that sheet or what's just been removed from that sheet, and figuring out how they're going to get through the next situation. That's a fairly good formula. You drop a situation that is hard. Not impossible, not insoluble, hard. One that there's going to be some problems. People are going to have to pull together. One of those characters can't solve it. You're going to have to take something away and make them want to get it back or want to get back at the person who took it away person, people, organization, opposition, and fuel some of those chemicals, get some of those endorphins going, get people riled, wreck their shit right for them, and then adjudicate the process of them coming back and wrecking all the shit in return. Because that's, that's what they're going to do. I'm going to get together and they're going to show up on the doorstep of the person who did stuff to them and they're going to make terrible things happen. And that's the best. That is the absolute best. When you finish that game, when everyone says, well, now I'll see you guys next week. And you log back, log out, sit back, tired. Not just it's been a long day and I just spent four hours rolling dice and talking, but tired because you've been burning mental resources to get past this issue that you've teamed up with the people around you you've played to one another's strengths and weaknesses and you get out there dialing in the difficulty on something like that for the game master can be a little tricky because you don't have the advantage of the immediate math and the uh, and being able to set up the algorithms that a game can set up to make those things more likely to happen. And this is where improvisation is your friend. Because if you have stats written down that you are going to be absolutely dedicated to as this fight goes on, as this situation goes on, uh, then... Uh, that can be very difficult, but that can also be very final. And if you've designed something that is going to be effectively unbeatable, well, you don't know how effectively unbeatable something you've got is until it encounters the player character. No plan survives contact with the player characters. And anything that you have calculated as, well, they should be able to beat this thing, uh, you don't know. You do not know until the dice start to get thrown because there's random number generation involved and RNG trumps all of your plans. Uh, so it pays to be flexible when it comes to this. Okay, they're about to get their shit wrecked. They're about to get their shit completely wrecked and there comes a point at which you risk a rage quit. Empyrean's done a great job of making sure we don't rage quit. Uh, not because... I, there were a couple of times it was certainly tempting, but one or two of us just kept pushing. The, nope, we're fixing this and we're getting our stuff back. Uh, in a role-playing game, it's a little bit different. There's a little bit more emotional involvement. There's a little bit more personal stake. And because you don't have the limitations of a set system and algorithm for for opposition, uh, you can very easily 
add a zero where you don't need a zero or um, or throw a little bit too much into that opposition. Well, this guy is going to be really rough. And there's a small difference sometimes between rough and impossible. Uh, and that's not just how you designed your uh, opposition. That's how the characters have been built and designed. And uh, you can't, there, there, there's no challenge in just mopping the floor with all the PCs constantly because you, you can just make the character that does that. You can just make the opposition that does that. Well, here's an entire army of people seven levels higher than you. Let's see what you do. That's that's a rage quit. That's that's where, well, nope, we, we can't beat this. So uh, is there something else we want to play? But stay flexible, a little light on your feet. Um, adjust for how much effort the characters have put into something. You've got a fairly good chance of getting that good gameplay loop. Your story can be solid. You stay a little bit of flexible on how that opposition is. Gauge your players. Keep your eye on them. Or your ear, depending on your, your uh, how you're playing. See if you can find that point where they are just desperate enough, but haven't gone over the edge. Take them up to desperate, but not over the edge to quit. Because you want them to be up against the edge, but you don't want them hopeless. Yeah, you 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 bring about hopelessness. You have ended your game. Uh, you 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 might continue playing past that, but if the characters don't have the hope that they can succeed, or worse, if the players don't have the hope that the characters can succeed. There is very little reason for them to continue playing that game unless they enjoy misery. But if there's that glimmer, if there's that glimmer of hope, my ship's wrecked, but there's enough of it left. I might be able to put it together. Okay. We'll aim for that. It doesn't have to flow smoothly. Hang on, I'm going to log out for a minute. Wait, don't, don't, oh God. Doesn't have to flow smoothly. Shouldn't flow smoothly. Those bumps and lumps in the road. Those things that guide a concerted action. But then you get to... I put all this together to make it last, and it's just going to last long enough. Hop on board. We've got a shot. That's... That's a good feeling. As a game master, I want to be a person who arranges that. I don't want it to be a foregone conclusion. I don't want to give them a certainty of success. You never want a certainty of success. But you want that sliver of hope. One rocket gets through, we had not, we were not getting off the moon. One rocket, one patrol finds us. Because there's patrols out looking for us. It was bad. A hundred things could go wrong. We had one path to victory. One, Well, we had one path to survival. Victory comes later when we go back and wreck their shit right for them. You give that glimmer of hope. And then you watch your players capitalize on it. Because most game systems, Dungeons and Dragons certainly in 5th edition, uh, and, and a lot of others, Victory System for one, uh, have a bias towards players succeeding. You give them that glimmer of hope, they're probably going to make it. Probably. There is random number involved. And if the party goes out in a blaze of glory, the party goes out in a blaze of glory. And that's a story. And you sit back and you think about it for a little bit and you start making new characters. Uh, but if the party makes it, if the party makes it, not only is that story going to be legendary and 
you are going to be legendary for having orchestrated that as a game master. But what comes after that is going to be an epic. What comes after that is the last act of any revenge movie, of any action film, of any 80s up in your face, blowing stuff up for no reason, motorcycle down the road with rockets flying off the side of it. Epic. And that is worth every last bit of the effort. Well, thanks for following me along in this particular rant. Uh, that last night's game is still really fresh in my mind. I feel like I escaped from a moon. Uh, my thanks to Wayne and Al and Andrew. Uh, my thanks to Josh for keeping all of us supplied and making sure that everything uh, flows correctly and showing us how to work the damn paint tool. Uh, the Warriors of Wednesday are a group that has kept me sane in this difficult and trying time. And yeah, that's uh, that's some stuff right there. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, give me a thumbs down. Feedback is feedback. If there's anything else you'd like to hear me talk about, things that uh, you'd like to hear me cover, your own experiences with survival games or role-playing situations like this of dramatic beats, uh, go ahead and leave me a comment below. I will love getting your comment. You'll love leaving me one. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, why not? My channel is awesome. Hit the subscribe button. If you do, you might also want to hit the notification bell so that you're alerted when my videos become available. If you would like to contribute to the channel in a more substantial manner, I invite you to hit me up on my Patreon page, www.patreon.com slash scottcorum, and consider donating. Absolutely anything helps. It allows me to make better videos more often. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I'm Scott Corum. This is what has mattered to me. I'll see you next time on the next Matters of Decorum. Thank <laughs> you.